Chapter 2. Oh man, you're in trouble again. Ramik, age 9. Nine-year-old Ramik Hunt was in trouble again. For the third time that week, he sat in the Oh man, you in trouble now chair in the principal's office and waited for the nun to come out and yell at him once more. Ramik, what have you done this time? She asked as she ushered him into a room so small he felt like he couldn't breathe. The tall nun, dressed in all black, never smiled. It wasn't my fault, sister. I finished my work, and I just wanted to see if I threw my pencil up to the ceiling real hard, if it would stick there. So I kept tossing it up. I almost made it, too, he added proudly. Then a couple of the other kids saw what I was doing and started copying me. So the teacher threw me out of class. Again. After saying it, Ramit knew his explanation sounded dumb. He picked out a loose thread on his uniform. Of course it was your fault, the nun replied sharply. Someone could have been seriously hurt when the pencils landed. Ramik wanted to say that he doubted a falling pencil could kill anybody, but he figured he was already in enough trouble. He sighed and wished once more that his mother hadn't transferred him from public school to this Catholic school, where the rules were strict and the academic work was easy. In a way, he liked telling people he went to Catholic school, because to the kids in the neighborhood, it meant your family had a little money but the reality of going to the school every day was not the same as boasting to your friends. Why didn't you just do your arithmetic like the rest of your class? The principal asked. There were 100 problems on your classwork assignment. I finished it. It was easy, Ramit told her. I learned multiplication and division at my old school. It was the principal's turn to sigh. <sighs> Ramit, little boys who cause constant disruptions in class never grow up to be successful people. You must learn self-control. I'm trying, sister, Ramik said, but I get bored and my mind gets to thinking about stuff and then I'm in trouble again. The principal cleared her throat. <clears throat> Your teacher and I think that perhaps you should be tested for special education. What's special education? Ramik asked. He rarely got to feel special at school these days. Perhaps this was something really cool. It's a classroom where the pace is slower. The, the classes are smaller and you will not have the distractions of so many academic and social challenges, the principal replied. Ramik frowned. I know what you're really saying, but I'm not slow, sister. I like doing the work in class. And I like the kids here. I even like the school, really. He looked at her with honest confusion. I can't help it if I keep getting in trouble. I will discuss this with your mother. We feel it might be for the best, the principal said. Get back to class now and try to behave. The principal looked at him through the glasses perched on her nose. Oh, and Ramik? Yes, ma'am, the boy replied as he turned to leave. Tell your mother that her tuition payment is due on Friday. Ramik rolled his eyes and stomped out of her office. The principal made him feel angry and stupid. He balled up his fist, knocked over the chair reserved for kids in trouble, and stormed into the hallway. The hallway, with its scuffed floors and tall windows covered with wire, loomed ahead of him, empty and silent. All the classroom doors were closed, but Ramit could hear sounds coming from each one as he passed by. The sing-song chant of first graders, the noisy disruption of the sixth graders. Ramit, full of pent-up anger and frustration, took a deep breath. At the far end of the hall, a sixth-grade boy Ramik knew only as Meatball came out of his classroom with a bathroom pass. Meatball was a bully and had been pushing Ramik around at lunchtime. In public school, Ramik had learned to fight to solve his problems. But in this Catholic school, even though he felt out of place, Ramik had gradually learned to solve his problems through peaceful means. But sometimes a fight was unavoidable. The boy walked toward him, and Ramik imagined himself in a cowboy movie. He would be the cool cowboy with the black hat, the fast horse, and the silver bullets in his gun. Just the two of them, heading towards each other down the dusty street, waiting for a showdown. Meatball, much larger and stronger looking than Ramik, glared at him as the two got closer. Your mama's on welfare, the boy hissed as he passed. Ramik was sure that the kid didn't even know his mother, but he wasn't going to let this dude talk about her. Ramik had had enough. He made a fist and punched Meatball in the stomach. Don't you be talking about my mama, he growled as he hit the boy again. Ramik, glad to have an excuse to release some of his frustration, pulled Meatball down on the floor and the two rolled around in the empty hallway for several minutes, exchanging fierce punches and pent-up anger. 
A classroom door opened then, and both boys, almost on cue, jumped up, dusted off their wrinkled to- and torn uniforms, and headed off in opposite directions. Ramik somehow felt better. He had no idea how the other boy felt, but he had a feeling that he wouldn't be picking on Ramik anymore. Basically, Ramik liked most of the liked most of the students at his school. They came from a wide background of families and cultures, and as his first exposure to people different from himself, Ramik thought it was pretty cool. But he'd never tell that to the darn nun in the principal's office. When Ramik got home that afternoon, his mother was asleep. He thought she looked beautiful as she lay there. In fact, she was so pretty, she could be Miss America. Of course, he had never seen a black Miss America, but he figured there's always a first time. He didn't wake her, but left and headed for his grandmother's house a few blocks away. Hey, Ma, he called to her as he walked into her warm kitchen, which smelled of fried chicken. All of her children and grandchildren simply called her Ma. How you doing, boy? His grandmother gave him a big hug. You hungry? Ramik nodded and grabbed an apple from the kitchen table. All the time. How was school, Ramik? His grandmother asked as she fixed him a plate. I don't know. Those nuns be tripping. They always yelling at me. I want to go back to my old school. Ramik immediately left out the part about the fight. Your mother put you in that school so you could get a better education, boy. Don't mess that up, his grandmother warned. But I already know the stuff they be doing in class, Ma. And the principal said she was going to put me in special education because I can't behave. But you're so smart, his grandmother said. Weren't you in a gifted and talented after school program last year? Ramik nodded, then pounded his table with his fist. Forks and spoons flew to the floor. This ain't fair, Ma. It doesn't make sense that this school thinks you need to be in special education, his grandmother mused. Tell me about it, Ramik said glumly as he ate his dinner. Maybe I'll talk to your mom and we can get you out of there. There's no way she's going to let them put you in classes for slow children. If I go back to public school, I can go back to that program, Ramik said hopefully. The lady who runs it, Mrs. Hatt, told me I I was smart and cute too. Ramit grinned, large dimples showing on his brown, round face. Ma laughed and pinched Ramit's cheeks. We're going to see what we can do to get you out of that school and back to a place where you can do well. We expect a lot from you, you know that boy? Yes, ma'am, Ramik replied. He hated being pushed, but at the same time, he loved the high expectations his family set for him. Your mama go to work today? His grandmother then asked. Ramik nodded. I guess. She was asleep when I got home. She works pretty hard. I think she gets paid tomorrow. Your mama loves you. You know that, don't you? She wants the best for you. But sometimes life gets bigger than she is, his grandmother told him. You'll understand that when you get grown. I know she loves me, Ramik replied. Last year when we went to Disney World, everybody on the block was hating me. That was too cool. His smile faded a little. But sometimes I just wish... I know what you wish, and wishing ain't gonna change nothing. Can nobody help you but yourself? You do what you gotta do and make your life something we can all be proud of. Ma always took the tough love stance with Ramik, giving him support but never babying him. Yes, ma'am, Ramik replied obediently. But he had no idea how to reach his grandmother's expectations. He couldn't even figure out how to deal with the next day. A conversation with Dr. Ramik Hunt. School problems. The third and fourth grades were challenging for me. I came from a public school system where the culture was very different. The jokes were more hurtful and problems were solved with your fist. At the Catholic school I'd attended when I was eight and nine years old, problems were solved by talking them out. It took me some time to get used to this more peaceful approach, but once I did, I actually liked it. Another reason I grew to like the school was that, in a way, going to a Catholic school meant your family had a little money. So it made me feel good to tell other kids in the neighborhood where I went to school. There was so much around me that shouted poor or dysfunctional that going to a Catholic school combated that negativity a little. But because of the threat of special education and because funding for the private school finally became a difficulty, I ended up back in public school. I had to reacquaint myself with my old culture, culture, which was challenging as well as discouraging. The transition was awkward for me because I'd stopped handling my problems with fighting. Schoolwork was never a problem for me. Classes were easy and learning was fun. But since I was always the type that needed my mind stimulated constantly, and because I had a little trouble with self-control, 
I was always into something. It took me many years to gain self-control. Controlling your behavior is just as important as what you learn in school. Good grades mean nothing if you're always in the principal's office. It took me a while to figure that out.